Hello everyone, I'm Bailey Halbreich and this is The Ships In. I'm sitting in for Mujerman who is currently playing in an Ultimate Frisbee Championship on his local community college's team. Welcome back! We hope everyone enjoyed their spring vacation, from assorted winter sports in Mammoth to visiting the tropical paradise of the Galapagos Islands. Pilgrim students really know how to have a good time. The ASB didn't waste any time after coming back from the break, presenting election speeches last Wednesday during chapel and holding the elections the following days. Let's take a quick look to see what our students were looking for in a candidate. I think that an ASB leader should be somebody I can feel free to talk to. I chose my candidate because I believe in their creativity and their willingness to comply with the students and their ability to plan more events. In this presidential election, I am looking for a strong independent leader who can lead those school students and plan better dances and more events for us. Congratulations to Kieran Kelly for being elected next school year's ASB Vice President and to Tucker King and Cassidy Hamilton on being elected next year's co-presidents. On Monday, Pilgrim had a very special guest. New York Times bestselling author Kwame Alexander visited Pilgrim School. He talked about two of his books, The Crossover, a story about two brothers and their love for basketball, and Booked, a novel about a boy's love for soccer. His mindful observations, fascinating life stories, and engaging conversations left the students and faculty entertained and wanting more. Once again, thanks for spending time with all of us here at Pilgrim School. Okay, remember what I'm about to tell you. The film and art festival and the yearbook dedication will all occur on May 20th. You can show off all your creative prowess to all your pals with your art and films. Remember, you do not need to be in one of Mr. Molnar's film classes to participate. Contact him for more details. Now, let's have a look at what's happening around Los Angeles in this new edition of The Outside World. outside world. This week we'll tell all you fashion aces about the best vintage stores in LA. Just because the clothes are used doesn't mean they're not still cool. Plus, they can also be cheaper. Here are a few places where you can find cool, used, trendy clothes. The Bearded Beagle is an awesome vintage store for boys and girls. Now these clothes are reasonably priced, but good quality. is a very big vintage store, which is awesome because the selection is huge. The Rose Bowl Flea Market is an awesome and huge flea market that only happens the second Sunday of every month, so make sure you go when you can. Now here's some places to find gorgeous vintage clothing for special occasions. The great thing about wearing vintage dresses is that you don't have to worry about showing up to the party in the same outfit as someone else. Now listen up all you girls going to prom, these stores can take the perfect dress for you. The Way We Wore is an amazing vintage store, but it's slightly more pricey. You can actually order the dresses online as well. Shireen's Vintage is known for their bridal gowns, but they have a warehouse in downtown which has a bunch of beautiful vintage dresses that are perfect for occasions with slightly more formal dress codes. Well, I hope some of you guys use these stores, whether it be for free dress on Friday or your Aunt Lucille's wedding. See you next time on, on the, the Outside, Outside World. World. Thanks, Lulu and Antonia. The gym floor got a total makeover during spring break. It is pretty aesthetically pleasing to say the least. And that color coordination, oh my. Next up, we'll get an update on the spring sports season with my pal, Lewis Armstead. Hello and welcome back. Once again, this is Lewis Armstead with the sports desk, and let's get right into it. Varsity track and field has had two meets already, and one meet tomorrow on the 15th. So if you see any of the members, or their coach, Miss Ebier, make sure to wish them good luck. Boys Varsity Volleyball has had four games in their season so far against Waverly, New Covenant, Lila C, and Santa Monica Academy with three wins to one loss, so keep up the good work. And as you may have seen, the gym has been closed recently due to renovations. They're getting a new floor and a new paint job, so look out for that. And that just about wraps it up for another episode of the Sports Desk. Make sure to stay updated with more sports news and watch the ships in. 
Thanks, Lou. Now we'll take an in-depth look at comparative government in this week's Inside the Classroom. Comparative government is a class where we're discussing the different organizations, the different uh, countries, and we're talking about non-governmental organizations and governmental organizations, and we are comparing them uh, to each other and within each other, as well as different countries. The visual projects that are outside my door are kind of the hands-on part of visualizing the changes over time that we see in our politics, in our reforms, in our inclusion of especially women since it was just Women's History Month. And so with the eighth graders, we started talking about the reformers pre-Civil War. And so just taking that into the modern day of how we're still reforming and working towards bettering and including um, society and political participation and the European Union timeline was for the comparative class and that's again to see that change over time of these countries in Western Europe fighting each other through two major wars and then coming together to form one bigger union. Um, so something that is unique about the course of comparative government is the fact that it is changing day to day. It's responding to what's going on in the world in the 21st century in the now. Uh, for example, we were talking about the rise in terrorism and the rise in religious extremism. And then of course, unfortunately, the bombings in both Brussels and Paris happened. And so we put that into context and we analyze that and we look at how that's impacted by the rising tensions between the Western world and the Eastern world and the rise of Christianity and uh, Muslim extremism and whether or not that's going to lead to more peace or more intolerance and so that's all affecting the day-to-day -day goings on so I think that makes this class really unique in that we're responding to what's happening in the moment. And with that we conclude this episode. Once again my name is Bailey, Wet Cat Food Halbreich. Thanks for watching and remember to join us next time for The Ship's In.